Thank you. Okay, thank you. And uh, so uh, today we're going to continue on our topic of Kabbalah of creation. Today we're going to speak a little bit about uh, the big picture. The big picture of the Kabbalah of creation. The very, very beginning of creation. Um, Hashem didn't just create the world randomly, as we know. He created it with a purpose, with a goal. It wasn't just a, uh, like a hobby or some kind of thing. He just wanted to make a, uh, a uh, like a uh, puzzle, to, uh, yeah. enjoy building a puzzle or, or building a plane or, or, or doing some, some, you know, some arts and crafts and he made the world. But actually the, there, was a, there was a big picture. There was a purpose. There was a goal that he had with, uh, with this whole creation. And uh, in the readings of the Torah, implicit in that is the, uh, is, the uh, is his, his goal and purpose of creation. So if you read carefully the words of, of, the, of the creation, you'll see that Hashem already had a whole big, big plan. And we as Jews, we know that uh, it says Hashem created the world. As the Medrash says, he created the world because he wanted to make a dwelling place for himself in this world. So creation, like it wasn't just, it wasn't just random. It was, there was a goal, there was a purpose. The purpose was to change the world, make it a better place and to fix it and to create a place that eventually it can be a fitting place for Hashem to live there. And this is what the Medrash says. In this Ava Kodesh Baruch Hashem had a desire to make for himself a dwelling place for Hashem in this world. And we find it right at the very beginning. It's implied. As we know that it says that when it says when Hashem created the world, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And then it says, and the spirit of God was hovering over the face of the world. So there are another, another, a number of, of, of uh, hints. What does this mean that the, the spirit of God was hovering on the face of the deep? What was going on? So in one medrash it says that the Ruach HaLakim is, is, the, is the spirit of the Mashiach. The spirit of God is the spirit. Of, what, what does it mean the spirit of the Mashiach? Mashiach was, was like the person Mashiach was hovering over, over, the, over the creation. But what it means on a deeper level, perhaps, is that God was, was already planning and plotting right at the very beginning. That his whole creation was with a goal to change the world and make the world a better place and to bring Mashiach. So Mashiach was already in the very beginning of creation. There's already a hint to what God's big picture was. Not just that he wanted to create a world that people and animals and and uh, the sun and the moon and the constellations and, and all the vegetations. No, more than that. Everything that's being created over these next six days and finally resting on Shabbos, all of it is all for what? And the, the, the spirit of God was hovering on the face of the deep. So this is like quite a significant thing that's going on here. That God is, is, uh, is planning to bring the Mashiach. What is the Mashiach? Mashiach is when the world reaches a state of uh, perfection. That's what's happening over here. So, you know, people ask, why is, it, why, is, why is the belief of Mashiach so important? Why is that such an important part of the Jewish belief? We know that uh, the Rambam codifies, he speaks about 13 principles of faith. And he says that there are 13 things that we have, to, uh, we have to believe in as Jews. And one of them is the belief in the coming of the Mashiach. Well, we see it's important because already at the very, very beginning of creation, Hashem was already thinking about it. But why is, why is it that such an important thing to understand and believe in the Mashiach? So I once heard an explanation. It's like sports. When you have two kinds of coaches, you have one coach, let's say you have a football team, 
And you have one coach that, that uh, right before the game starts, he tells every player, say, you do this, you do that, you go here, you run here, you run back, this way, forward. And you go do whatever you have to do. And if we will all do our jobs, we will we'll win the game. But he tells, he, he focuses on individual, individual jobs, he, individual players. He says, you, this player does that, the linebacker does that, the quarterback does this, everybody, these are the jobs. And then you have another coach that sits, sits down with the team and says, guys, we want to be winners. We can be winners. Let me explain you my strategy, how we're going to win the game. Okay, I, I want to show you. And he takes out a whole chart and he shows everybody. If you go here and you go there and you go there, if you take it to there, there it'll be the first down, second down. By the fourth down, we'll get to the end and we'll, we'll make the touchdown. So he's showing each player, not just their individual role, but he's giving them big picture. And when you give a team big picture, you're a different player. You're not just a, a, a pawn. You're not just a, a, a foot soldier. You, you, you're given a, a glimpse of what the general has in mind, what the coach has in mind, how we're going to win the game. And then you feel like a winner because you know, you see, you understand the strategy. You understand the big picture. So you have a small picture coach, and a big picture coach. So Mashiach is the big picture coach. So Hashem, at the very beginning of creation, he already alluded to it and hinted to it. He says, guys, I have a plan here. He tells the world, he tells everybody, I have a plan. I have a plan to make this world a good place, a better place. A place where we're all going to be able to uh, take over the world. We're going to win the game. We're going to make the world a better place. And he says to us, even though you see a lot of suffering, you'll see a lot of hurt, and you'll see a lot of, uh, a lot of bad people hanging out on this planet. So you say to yourself, how, is, how are we going to do it? Hashem says, look, I'm, going to give, I'm, give, I'm, I'm telling you what I'm doing here. I'm bringing the Mashiach. This is my plan. Okay, there's, there's, six, there's so many mitzvot. There's a Ten Commandments and 613 mitzvot. And if everybody does their job, their role, maybe not right away, but over a period of place of five, 6,000 years, we'll be able to get to the, to the finish line. To the, to the, to the, and we'll all shout out, touchdown. <laughs> We're all going to, to, to uh, say score. We're all going to get that final. You might not see it for a while, but that's what I'm telling you. I'm telling you what my mission statement is, what my, what my goal is, what my big picture is. And if you understand that, the whole game will be much easier. So that's why, why, why. So why is Mashiach one of the 13 principles of faith? You would think it's not a principle of the faith. It's an important thing to believe. It's a nice thing to believe. No, it's part of the whole thing. Every mitzvah we do becomes easier when we know the big picture, when we know what the goal is, when we know what Hashem has in mind. When Hashem teaches us what he really has in mind. So that's the very beginning of creation already. He is alluding. It says, The Spirit of God. What was the Spirit of God? The Spirit of Mashiach. The Mashiach plan. He already had, from the very beginning of creation, he already had the Mashiach plan. And if you look actually Kabbalistically at the word, which is the word that the Spirit of God is hovering over the face of the deep. Mirachefes is a strange word in Hebrew. It's right, one of the very first words of creation. At the very beginning of, of, of Genesis, it says the word mirachefes. What does this word mirachefes mean? So the Kabbalah says that the word mirachefes is, comes from a combination of two words. Reish peiches, meis. That uh, Reish Peches, I'm not going to focus so much on the mace, but Reish Peches is the Kabbalistic tradition that there are 288 sparks of holiness. Rapach There's 288 sparks of holiness that need to be, in the course of creation, needs to be uh, extricated. 
and that there were sparks of, 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 of holiness that came down from another spiritual world and they landed in this world and they lodged themselves into the physical phenomena that we know in this world. And it's our job to extricate those sparks of holiness. So every time we do a mitzvah somewhere in a far-flung place in the world, we might be grabbing another spark, another one of the 288 sparks. I guess the 288 also broke up into many more pieces as well. Because we still have we still have some work left. Many times the Rebbe says he thinks already that, that we already did everything. We just have to welcome Mashiach and Zehu. But there is that Kabbalistic tradition of the 288 sparks of holiness that need to be extricated. Now I'm going to tell you something very important that we need to know, we need to learn about a little bit. And that is that about this mission that the Jewish people have, it's not just a mission for the Jews. It's really a mission for everybody in this world. Even though the Jews were given the Ten Commandments, 613, but we know that there, were, that there was a divine plan for every single human being in this planet. And that's something that hasn't been spoken about for many years, about the world plan, the world mission that exists in the, in the Torah. And that shows up in this week's Pasha, in Parshas Noach. And that's known as the Noahide Code, the Noahide Code. Right? So it says that when, when, when God destroyed the world and then he rebuilt it with Noah, and Noah landed in his, in, after the flood in his, in his ark. And he came out to the world. God said, I want to rebuild the world, but this time I want to do it right. I want to make sure the world will not come back to where it was before, to a state of destruction. We're going to rebuild the world in the right way. And he gave Noah a basic code of morality not just for, for the Jewish people, but for the world. So as Jews, we have a tradition of a Noah code, the Noahide code, which is recorded in Masech the Sanhedrin, page 59. You can look it up there, but also in Maimonides, in, in the end of the very last few chapters of Maimonides in, in, in the Book of Kings, he also has a whole chapter speak, addressing this Noahide code. And he says that this Noahide code was passed on to Moses at Sinai, for the Jewish people to share it with the rest of the world. And the Rambam says that when Jewish people are in a position to influence the rest of the world, we have a responsibility to teach the people of the world this code of Noah, which was passed on to Moses and given to the Jewish people to teach the rest of the world. And the Noahide code, you can look in the book of Noah and in the, in the, in the uh, Parsha of Noah and Parsha Breshis, and you'll find seven laws which were given by God to the people of the world. And we'll, we'll discuss them a little bit more at, at length, but, but just on a, a general level, if you want to know what the laws are, if you look, give a look, at the, it, it's based on Aleph Bet. Gimel Dalad Hey Vav Zayin. Aleph Bet Gimel Dalad Hey Vav Zayin. That's that's seven letters in the Hebrew alphabet. The first seven letters, each one hints to another one of these Noahide codes, Noahide laws. There are seven basic Noahide laws that make up the code. The first one is Aleph, which is in this week's parsha. It's a prohibition against <clears throat> eating a, a, a live limb, an, a limb of a live animal. And we'll get to that soon, but that basically includes within it the concept of cruelty to animals. So one of the basic principles of, of, of Judaism and basic principles of the entire code for the whole world is not to be cruel to animals. That's an interesting uh, concept. One of the seven laws actually is, 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 is a prohibition against eating a, a live limb of an animal, 
we'll get to that, but which encompasses in it the concept of cruelty to animals. So that's the letter Aleph. Aleph is Eva Menachai. Aleph Eva Menachai means a limb of a living creature, which is the prohibition against cruelty to animals. The second code, the second commandment is <clears throat> Birkat Hashem. We use the word, uh, I mean, blessing Hashem, but really it means the other side. It's a prohibition against blaspheming. Bet is for blasphemy. Bet. Aleph is, is the cruelty to animal. Bet is for bet, Birkat Hashem, which is blasphemy of God. And what does that include? That includes to be respectful, that society needs to be respectful to God. Yeah. And not to be not just not to not to believe in, to believe in God is one thing we'll discuss about so shortly. But this particular commandment is about being respectful, honorable to God, to show respect to the Creator, and hence you show respect to the Creator. Then you show respect to creation. You show respect to, to, to your elderly. You show respect to your parents. It all falls into that category, but it's primarily honoring God. And as a result of that, you don't blaspheme God. We're going to get to that a little bit more. I'm just giving you the, the, the seven biggies over here, which are part of the Noahide Code. The third commandment of the Noahide Code is Gzela, not to, not, to, not to steal things from people. That means you respect the people of the world, not just that, you respect their possessions, their ownership of their things. You can't just go and hop something that someone else owns. And that was one of the great sins of the people before the flood. They, 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 they fell into the abyss of Hamas, which Hamas is, is thievery and those, that kind of behavior. So when we take, we take away things from other people, that is a, 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 a sins of the highest order. And that's Gimel, Gzela. Number four is Dalad, Dinim. There was a commandment from God that every society should set up a, a system of law. And um, that is the Dalit represents Dinim, which is to set up, every society needs to set up a court system. So in order that it should be a moral system, a civil, civilized, civilization needs to have, you need to have a, a, a body which enforces it. And, monitors it and that is the court system the police system etc etc it's it, it's system of dinim dinim means laws a lawful lawful society it has to be a law-abiding society so that's the fourth one the fourth code the fourth law of, of the of the noahide code is to create a lawful society dinim dalit hey Stands for hariga, which is murder, hariga, which is murder. So there is a prohibition against murder, and then there is a, a vav, which which is for the for the that we should, we should not serve uh, uh, idolatry, and um, and then Zion is Nus, which is is uh, to to live a, a marital life, a life well, not a life of Znus, which is which is a life of, of immorality in, in, in sexual behavior. Okay. So these are the seven Noahide code. Now, so it says that the Jewish people were told that whenever we're able to teach these laws to the rest of the world, that's how we're going to bring about. A lawful society, a society that, uh, that is respectful to God, respectful to the animals, a uh, society that's not not stealing and is not immoral, and um, um, has uh, honors life. Uh, this kind of society and has has proper laws uh, put into place. This will be a society that will be successful in changing the world and making the world a better place. So as Jews, there is a commandment on the Jewish people to go and teach the rest of the world this Noahide code. Yes, so contrary to what people say that the Jewish, Jewish religion is only for Jews, 
which you know, a great a great part of it is, is only for Jews, but there is a, a, a Jewish system to bring peace and harmony and a strong society for the world. And that is the Noahide code, which is in this week's portion, at the very beginning of creation, God teaches Adam and then Noah what it means to live a civil life. And then, and then later on, he reveals it to Moses and tells Moses that the Jewish people should, it's our job to go and teach the world morality. And it's no coincidence that Jews throughout the generations, there have been many Jews throughout the generations who always felt that it's our, our business to try to change the world, to make the world a better place. Now that's, that's, that's in our DNA. I guess it's no coincidence that you know, the Jewish people always started all these different movements to try to fix the world, perfect the world. Sometimes they were good, sometimes they were mistaken, but you know, you know the Americans, America started based on, on the, the Bible, on the Jewish Bible. The, you know, the, the, the people that first came to America were very, very entrenched in, in, in the teachings of Judaism for the world. And later on, there were other movements that started like communism, started by Jews also to try to fix all the economic woes of the world, try to make the world a better place. I mean, they got messed over and it ended up being a, a, a tragic mistake. But it was started by Jews who are idealistic. In fact, there were some Jews who Yeshiva Bachrim even they came up with this idea of communism. You know? And then later on, the hippie movement. Uh, we also take credit for that. <laughs> it was also trying to bring you know peace to everyone, and the Jews were at the forefront of that for sure. Right? And throughout uh, throughout the generations, in many many different ways, we all tried to teach the world to make the world a better place. But that's built in because in Judaism, the Jews were taught that we need to go out and teach the world how to become a, a civil society, a moral society, a world that will lead us to the coming of Mashiach. These human beings are flawed people. Yeah. Is that a question or? Okay. I don't think so. So this is this was what something the Jews always always had, and, and the Rebbe spoke about. I remember a number of years ago, hearing from the Lubavitcher Rebbe, he said, so, "So the fact that Jews didn't teach the world the seven Noachide mitzvahs all the years that was because the Jews were persecuted, so we never had an opportunity to teach the world. So we were afraid to tell the world how to, to conduct their activities, because, you know." with the fear that they're going to persecute us. But the Rebbe said that in today's day and age, the world has changed a lot. And people are listening to other people's ideas, especially now, I guess, with social media and everything, right? So today would be the perfect time, the opportune time, to go out to the nations of the world and to teach them the laws of Noah. In fact, there are many groups around the world, especially in the United States, there are different groups. They call themselves Noahides. Noahides. I look them up. There's, there's groups that, that follow the Noahide code. And the Noahide code, I mean, they are just the seven mitzvahs that I'm telling you, but really the seven mitzvahs, each one of them has within it many, many more mitzvahs. So whatever the Jews were able to influence the world that ever said, we tried to. But then we went into hiding for many years. He says, but now that people are listening to the Jews, might as well, you know, not just give them ideas about the economy and how to how to how to build, uh, you know, Goldman and Sachs. But we should also be teaching the world morality, because we oh, have, we have a moral code directly from God. So there are many people who teach, especially amongst Chabad and others, who teach. To all the all the nations of the world, this Noahide code, because we believe that in this Noahide code lies the secret to salvation for the world. I might start soon a TV station called the Noahide Code. <laughs> See if we can get some more uh, congregants here. You know. uh,
like Jackie Mason said, you know, he started telling jokes. So he said it was, wasn't working so much with the Jews. So he went to the to the bigger crowd, to the Gentiles. <laughs> it worked it worked very well. Anyways, but there is, like I say, a Jewish message for the world. And what's the message? The message is Mashiach. Now people have taken this idea of Mashiach and they've used it in, in, in different ways. That, that that you know started numerous other religions also started with this concept of Mashiach. As we know, that Christianity is very messianic based, and uh, you know with this with this mis- mission, and, and and then you have Islam that also has this kind of thing to to redeem the world. Whether they're doing it all in the right way or not, I don't know, but uh, but it's all. It's all this idea of, of fixing the world and making the world a better place. Unfortunately, a lot of these other religions got mixed up and a lot of people died in the name of the religions. And so it's sort of a dangerous thing, this Mashiach concept. <laughs> because when people, they want my Mashiach, not your Mashiach, you know what I mean? It's my Messiah, not your Messiah. You got the wrong Messiah, right? So that's, that's what goes on in the world. But we as Jews, we believe that from the beginning of time, Hashem had this plan of trying to fix the world, to make the world a dwelling place for him, and to make the world civilized, civilization, based on the Noahide code. So again, I told you what the Noahide code was, Allah Beis Gimel Dalahev of Zion, the seven commandments. Which I'd like to go a little bit more in more detail to show you these ideas how they are all much greater, much broader ideas, and uh, you know we can talk a little bit more because each one it's not just that particular commandment that the Torah says, but really there it, it's it's a foundational uh, commandment, which which uh, spreads out into many many other ideas and really basic principles for humanity. But this idea of, of, of the Noahide code and the Mashiach yes, hands is, implicit, and is implicit in the creation. When Hashem created the world, he already had a whole plan. He already had like the coach. I told you before, the coach, he already gave us all yes, the big, big picture. The big picture of what he was planning to accomplish with, with, with the religion, with with. With with humanity, with with for all of humanity, which is the Mashiach plan, and we're still working on it, and it's coming soon to a station near you, and it's happening sooner, Mitzvah Hashem, and with Hashem's help, you know. We always, as Jews, we always, whenever we finish a class, we always say, "May we merit to the coming of Mashiach." So now I'm, I'm explaining to you a little bit how that was already there. What, what, it's not a, it's a new idea. It's already from the first day of creation. This plan of Mashiach was, was already hovering in the face of the people. So Hashem should bless us all. We should all know, all know from good things and happy things. And we should teach the whole world the message of, of, of Judaism, which was given to us by Moses at Sinai. And through that, we'll merit the coming of Mashiach the Kainu, of Mehdav Yemenu. Amen. Anyone have any questions on the Noahide code? So the Jewish. Anyone? Any questions? Any statements? Any? Uh... You have to. You have to unmute yourself if you want to say something. You could even say you could even say good Shabbos to me if you want to say something. Yeah, yeah. Shabbos. <laughs> okay. Very good. Okay, we'll see you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Rabbi. Always, always a pleasure. Thank, Thank you, Rabbi. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All the best. Thank you. Well, it's to be continued next week.